The FH5 Update 32 is officially here. In today's video, we're gonna check out everything in this new update. We've got new cars, new features, and we also have the entire list of patch notes. We're gonna go through these and see what the developers have changed. I have to do something before we start. You have no idea how happy this makes me. Let's go jump into all of the new event lab stuff because apparently there's quite a bit. Wait, are these new? I don't know if these are new, but they look kind of new. We've got a load of flags and banners. These look very new. Here, here, this is new. Oh, that's so sick. Join the race off. Why does it sound like some weird cult? Just saying. These are some of the new props. I'm gonna leave it up to all the map creators to make some cool stuff. I'm very excited to see what they do with them. I guess we'll jump into the new car pack and check out some of the new cars. The FH5 Acceleration Car Pack is officially here. Four brand new cars. It costs five bucks. The developers were actually actually really, really nice and gave me a couple of codes for the new DLC to give away to you guys. We're doing a giveaway over on the Discord server. There's a, there's a link down below. Which one of these do we try first? <laughs> That's a stupid question. Ford Supervan 4 it is. It's got nearly 2,000 horsepower. Considering it's a van, it doesn't weigh that much. From all-wheel drive electric motors, it's crazy. As per usual, this wouldn't be an AR-12 video without any fun facts about this incredible machine. So right out of the gate, it is an electric car, but it does have two gears on board. With the 2,000 horsepower it has, it can reach 200 miles an hour. It's crazy. What the hell is a super van? Let, let, let me explain. Ford's been making these Ford super vans dating back to, I think it's like the 60s or the 70s. Ford essentially builds these super vans to promote their transit vans. The Ford super van one, the original one, was built in the 60s using a Ford GT40. It was literally a Ford GT, except they took the Ford GT40 bodywork off and put a transit body on top of it. That was number one. The second one was the exact same thing, but instead of the GT40, they used a Group C racing car. The third one, they threw the engine away and they included the engine from a Formula One car. And then you've got this one. The reason this one was built was to promote the new E-Transit. On the interior here, yeah, you can actually see it. The developers did it. It's got a whole bunch of settings in it. The team at Ford actually put together completely custom software for this thing. And in the computer system, you can tell it, oh, I want to do a mode called rear tire cleaning. What that does is it locks up the front axle so you can't move it. And it just allows you to stomp your foot on the gas and it spins your wheels. It has drag racing modes. It's got drifting modes. In a 2,000 horsepower van, it's incredible. Unfortunately, in FH5, the only like modes that we can switch between is the all-wheel drive mode, which is like the race mode. And you could also make it drift mode, which essentially just makes it rear whip. Jesus Christ, what a ridiculous vehicle. Since this thing is a super modified all electric supercar. We don't have many upgrades. All we can do to the thing is we're actually already on slick racing tires. We could downgrade. Oh, maybe we should give it a go on the drag strip. That could be really interesting. Okay. We've also got rally tires and snow tires. No proper off-road tires for this thing. I guess I will make the tires a little thicker though. 325s and 325. And we've also got rally suspension and drift suspension. You love to see it. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. It's yelling at me because I missed the engine spacers. Sorry, motor spacers. Last but not least for the super van, let's give it a spicy paint job before we hit the open road. We do have advanced painting options. Group number one is the main body of the car. Is group two that lime green? Yes, it is. Why does it have four hood releases. Also, look at those wing mirrors on there. Those are ridiculous. In the strangest race we've ever done, I'm going up against a bunch of hypercars in, in an all-electric Ford Transit, which is kind of selling myself short a little bit, but eh, what will you do? These super vans are always some of the most fun cars to drive in Forza Horizon 5. Because although, yes, they do weigh quite a bit. I mean, it's four and a half thousand pounds or whatever. But the fact that all of that weight is down low, like basically rubbing along the floor, and it's got a ton of aero, and it's got enough horsepower to keep you moving. It just creates this super sick driving dynamic that's just so much fun. Here's something I've always found super weird about these. You as a driver would be sitting 
super high because at the end of the day, it is a van. Ah! I almost didn't make the corner. It is a van, right? So you're sitting quite high. I imagine like as a racing driver, that would just feel so... I found a defect. It turned to the left all by itself. Mix on his way to deliver all of the stickers. I'm just saying, unfortunately on the AR-12 store, we don't use Super Van 4s to make deliveries. So it's not, you know, next day delivery, <laughs> unfortunately. Fire brings up a great point. Does it have the silly engine startup sound? Before we jump into any drifting stuff, I do really want to give this thing a go on the drag strip. I just kind of want to see what it can do in a quarter mile. Could they add Super Van 1 and Super Van 2? I'm just saying, it'd be mad cool. Anyways, what do we think this can do? A little slow off the line, if anything. I, I probably need to tune the gears. Doing 150 in first gear, probably not a good idea. That's still an 8.3 though. The craziest thing is that's an 8.3 with zero drama. One quick tune of the gears and we're gonna give it another go and hopefully get like an 8.1 or something. Come on, come on, come on. And away we go. Still a bit sluggish off the line, but we're now shifting at 130. All things considered, if I was going really try hard, I'd probably mess around with the aero and the suspension. An 8.2 though, that's what I like to call good enough. Here, here's my dilemma, right? Although we can't make it rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, we can only do that by the drive mode. I kind of need to pick my tire compound now. If I want all wheel drive, then I should go drag tires. If I want rear wheel drive, then I should go, I guess, drift tires. The only thing I know I need for both builds is drift suspension. So that's basically mandatory. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go snow tires. Snow tires it is. Let's start with the thing in drift mode. That's going to be the rear wheel drive version. There you go. Rear wheel drive. Oh my God. What a ridiculous vehicle. I have to drive so slow. You cannot press the throttle on this because you just spin the wheels immediately. Honestly, there is no amount of throttle control where you can drive this thing normally. What a machine. Look at it holding the outside line there. Oh my God. Sick. Sick. 200k rear wheel drive. 200k rear wheel drive is a solid score. All wheel drive, baby. We got to send it though. I want a new PB. Jesus Christ. Okay, now it, it worked. Honestly, this thing has so much front end grip. It's actually quite difficult to get it to slide exactly the way you want it. Like the front tires are so thick. It's got a tremendous amount of grip. No! Even in the drift mode. No! I know it's a stupid question, but I need to ask it. Is the Ford Supervan a thumbs up, a thumbs down, or somewhere in the middle? It's a sick car. It's probably one of my favorite cars in all of FH5. I, I love this thing. It's incredible in every single way. Which one of these three do we drive next? I see a lot of GT500 in the chat. That's probably a good choice. There is some cool car customization available for it, and I'm kind of down to go and check it out. So let's see. More fun facts about more cool cars. Shelby GT500, what a glorious car. Like we were talking about in the stream earlier, you might think that this car was already in a Forza game. K kind of? Here's the thing with the Shelby GT500. There have been an absurd absurd amount of variant. You've got the regular Ford Mustang, then you've got the GT350 and the GT500. Then you've got like the Hertz racing cars, then you've got like the KR versions, then you've got like special editions of those. There was also, I think there was like one convertible version of these ever made. I don't actually know if this is a fun fact. Somebody will correct me in the comments 100%. There is a version of this car and I think it might be the most expensive expensive muscle car ever made. The 1967 Eleanor. And those things are around $2 million or so in real life. One of these, like the Shelby GT500, are around 250 k one sold for like a couple of months ago. I'm pretty sure this was also the first Mustang that offered a big block engine. This one's got a 
seven liter V8 engine. It's amazing that a seven liter engine only puts out 350 horsepower, but you need to remember it was the 60s and a car with 350 horsepower was downright scary fast. Like I was saying though, there were a bunch of different variants of this thing. Chat, you're gonna need to correct me for these and let me know which one is which because we have four different front ends. We've got the regular GT500 front end. We've got this one with the cool like almost cube lights in it. No front bumper and no badging on that one. I kind of like this one though. That's the KR version. I guess we'll run that. That's like the racing version. Oh. Oh. Anyways, engine swaps for the GT500. I'm not gonna lie. It's illegal to swap the engine in this thing. We have a 6.2 liter V8. Why can you diesel swap it? What the shit? Why is there a Dodge Viper engine? Who picked these engines? A 7 liter V8 with 500 horsepower? That's a GT40 engine? Wait, what? 1,500 horsepower? <laughs> Build number one, we'll keep the stock engine in. Then we'll come back and check the other ones out. Wait, vintage? Yes. Smash. We're going old school for our first build. I love it. 350 horsepower in a rear wheel drive car that only had 210? Bro, how did it not just do burnouts everywhere? I guess you are right. Back in the 60s, there weren't really any safety systems. So if you did crash it, it was basically 100% chance of death. I guess that would keep you from flooring it everywhere. Wait, back in the day, these didn't even have seat belt. No seat belt would also make me drive a little bit slower. Hey, jobs for the gt500 we've got red blue black very nice of course it's the 60s gt500 top of b class i think honestly that's gonna be the perfect place to drive something like this any faster and we're gonna start getting into sketchy territory look at this 480 horsepower with the white wall tires we get a tiny bit of wheel spin this is the perfect gt500 right here the wooden steering wheel the cobra on the badge oh my why is my gear stick so wobbly my gear stick is actually a pleasure stick i just learned why the shelby gt500 was so popular with the lady that's all it's because it's a charming good looking vehicle please don't demonetize me you can keep your new lambo with the wide body and 25 inch wheels i want they call me a boomer all you want this is better. An old classic Mustang being raced as hard as possible is the coolest thing. It's awesome. I don't know what to tell you. I'm going to toss in a 1,500 horsepower engine and I'm going to give it all wheel drive. If you're a Mustang enthusiast, this is your cue to leave. I need Forza Aero as well. Sorry. Then I need racing. Oh my God, we're S2 class. We are once again, boys, a rolling coffin. Shelby GT500 with a 1,500 horsepower. I guess technically now it should be called the Shelby GT 1005. What, chat? Why was it actually called the GT 500? I know there's that stupid thing about the GT 350 being named after 350 steps. Is that actually true? Shelby just said bigger number equals better. Shelby is one of us. And on the bright side, I haven't crashed just yet. So who's the real winner? Considering this car has... 1,500 horsepower. It's unbelievably easy to drive. For a car that should be trying to kill me as it goes around every corner and accelerates out of them, I don't understand why it's not doing that. Is it the fastest thing? No. Is it very nice to drive? Yes. Considering we were in S2 class, that was abysmal... A bit... Awfully slow. Our final build for the GT500. You know already, we're going drift. I'm gonna go drifting with a GT40 engine. I'm not gonna do the illegal thing and put the diesel in. Then I'm gonna go, I guess supercharging is the way to go. Somebody says diesel swap it so Shelby can come out of his grave and slap you. It would be an honor. 850 horsepower, 3,000 pounds drift car. This now has a very cool engine note. Look at it into the corner it weighs like nothing this is a i love it it's just it's so nice look at how planted and easy it is to drive but at the same time it's unbelievably nimble and agile it's just it's kind of the best of both worlds honestly like if i was trying to teach someone to how to drift a car this would be a very good car to learn on geez is the shelby gt500 a thumbs up thumbs down 
We're somewhere in the middle. Definitely the fattest of thumbs up. The two Fords in this DLC pack are glorious. Tomorrow, we're gonna try out the McLaren Sabre and the Janetta. It should be super fun. Go enter the giveaway.